A warm welcome everybody to our Celtic Spirituality Reflection this evening. Hope your day has gone well, hope your week has gone well. One of the great themes in Celtic spirituality, as indeed in pretty much all spiritualities, is the fact that it's, as individuals we matter deeply. Our own journey matters, our story matters, but also we are part of the much bigger story of a great crowd of witnesses, a wonderful fellowship together. And of course for the Celtic saints, often that understanding and valuing of solitude went alongside the under, understanding and valuing of community. And so our opening words, we travel together, mindful of the, un, un, mindful of the enfolding love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I realise I nearly said unfolding love there, which would have worked just as well, because the love of God unfolds for us day by day. So mindful of the unfolding love, mindful of the enfolding love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. And this prayer from the modern writer David Adam. Circle me, Lord, keep protection near and danger afar. Circle me, Lord, keep hope within, keep doubt without. Circle me, Lord, keep light near and darkness afar. Circle me, Lord, keep peace within, keep evil out. Words from the Creed used on the island of Iona. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb, he ascended into heaven, to be everywhere present throughout all ages, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the Church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. As part of our prayers this evening, the wonderful prayer, the wonderful poem by George Herbert. Teach me, my God and King, in all things Thee to see. And what I do in anything, to do it as for Thee, not rudely as a beast to run into an action, but still to make Thee prepossessed and give it His perfection. A man that looks on glass on it may, st may stay his eye, or if he pleaseth, through it pass, and then the heaven espy. All may of thee partake, nothing can be so mean, which with this tincture for thy sake will not grow bright and clean. A servant with this clause makes drudgery divine, who sweeps a room as for thy laws, makes that and the action fine. This is the famous stone that turneth all to gold, for that which God doth touch and own cannot for less be told. Teach me, my God and King, in all things thee to see, and what I do in anything, to do it as for thee. Amen. This evening we are remembering Brendan the Navigator who died last uh, Sunday on, on the 16th of May in 577. I'm very grateful for this wonderful book, Celebrating the Saints, which gives lots of information about lots of wonderful people, extraordinary people. Brendan the Navigator, uh, the clues in the name, he was a great sailor and he asked for monks to join him and they sailed round the coast of Ireland, reached various bits of Scotland, even reached Iceland, and wherever they went, they sought to be a blessing to all those whom they met by pastoral care and teaching. 
he navigated. You and I are on a journey. I know that's such a cliched thing to say, but it is absolutely true. And may God give us grace to navigate our way to the ports where we are meant to reach, to the people whom we are meant to serve. For Brendan, it was not only about people. This little extract, Saint Brendan stayed awake and summoned his brothers to the vigil of the holy night with the verse, O Lord, open my lips. When the holy man had finished praying, all the birds started to flap their wings and sing, Praise the Lord, all his angels, praise him, all his host. They continued to sing for an hour, just as they had at Vespers. Well, the writer does not say if his interpretation of the birds uh, singing in birdsong was praise the Lord, all his angels, praise him, all his host, or whether the birds were actually using those very words. But a theme for Brendan, as it was to be later a theme for St. Francis, St. Francis of Assisi, was that the love of God was for the whole world and expressed back by the whole world. And that whole involvement in nature, in worship and praise, again a big theme for the Celtic saints, that nature itself spoke of the glory and the love of God. And all natural things, living and inanimate, spoke of that glory. So it's not surprising that the birds join in with Brendan's prayer. Some words from Psalm 104. Praise the Lord my soul, Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He sets the earth on its foundations, it can never, never be moved. You cover it with the watery depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. I wonder if the disciples had that in mind when Christ calmed the storm on the Sea of Galilee. At your rebuke the waters fled. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never, never again will they cover the earth. It goes back to the great old story of Noah and the flood. But now the love and the promise of God uh, is such that um, and the sign of the rainbow and hope that that destruction won't be given again. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. A, a wonderful uh, vision of the plenty that there is in nature, <coughs> and of course a big challenge to us that if what we are doing to the world environmentally means that this no longer happens, and what we're doing in terms of abusing things. So it talks about wine gladdening human hearts, but if we abuse wine, it doesn't gladden human hearts. These are gifts of God, the natural world, and we are to use them well and to be good stewards of them. Woe betide us if we get to the point where grass is no longer growing for cattle and where there's no longer place where wild donkeys can quench their thirst. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, the stork has its home in the junipers, the high mountains belong to the wild goats, the crags are a refuge for the hyrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey, and seek their food from God. 
the sun rises and they steal away, they return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out, go out to their work, to their labour until evening. The rhythm of human existence matching, complementing, being part of the rhythm of the natural order. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. There the ships go to and fro, and including Brendan the Navigator, who had the courage to sail and to visit, to meet new people, to share the love of God in deed and word. May we be thankful for all those navigators. May we also be praying for ourselves, perhaps for a time. It's uh, our calling is to stay in one shore, in one port, and to minister there. But even there, different people may come across us. And like Brendan, we are called to minister to each and every one whom we meet. Brendan, the, nav the navigator, died 16th of May in the year 577. And so to our final prayers. Through Christ, the firstborn of all creation, we pray for respect for the earth. Through Christ, Prince of Peace, we pray for peace for earth's peoples. Through Christ, King of Love, we pray for love in our lives. Through Christ, Lord of the Dance, we pray for delight in the good. Through Christ, Divine Healer, we pray for forgiveness for past wrongs. Through Christ, the Morning Star, we pray for the grace to make a new start for ourselves and for our world. And so may God bless us and keep us today and always, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. This Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. May we indeed be praying for a renewing, a refreshing by the Spirit of God. Here at St Michael's our 10.30 service of Holy Communion will be streamed uh, as well as in person. Likewise our three o'clock in the afternoon service of evening prayer, streamed and in person. The stream links, I think, are on the YouTube channel or in the little daily email. Do contact me if you'd like to know more. And at eight o'clock in the morning on Sunday, uh, a said service of Holy Communion in person at the church. Bless you. Thank you so much for joining us and all the best for the weekend. <laughs>